If you were to ask a group of people what is the Bible character Daniel famous for, I guess probably 99 out of 100 would say the lion's den and of course that's the most dramatic uh, part of the story of Daniel's life when he is rescued from the jaws of the lions by the angel of the Lord. But there's an awful lot more to Daniel than just that one event. In fact, the incident immediately following that is of enormous importance to understand not only his character, but also his theology as well. In Daniel chapter 9, we hear Daniel praying. We see that he has read in the scrolls of the prophet Jeremiah and has come to an understanding that the exile of the Israelites from Jerusalem would last 70 years. And so he starts to pray. And Daniel 9 records this long and very honest and quite intimate prayer that Daniel has with God where he acknowledges his own sin and the sin of his people and the sin of his ancestors and basically holds up his hand and says, Lord, you were right. You were right to judge us. We lost our way. We left the path that you set for us. And all of your judgments are true and righteous and good. And yet you have promised that you will regather your people after 70 years in exile. And then right at the end of the prayer, he has this beautiful addition, which I think gives us a glimpse of the depth and the quality of Daniel's theology that we can learn from. Daniel says, we make this request not because we are righteous, but because of your great mercy. Another way of saying that could be, Lord, we pray not because we are good, but because you are good. We expect an answer, Lord, not because we are righteous, but because you are gracious. So here we have a glimpse into covenant theology of the Old Testament, where their vision of God is revealed to us just briefly in little moments through these kinds of prayers. And we learn from Daniel that he understood and lived in grace. He realized that it wasn't because he prayed three times a day which he did. That was actually what got him thrown into the lion's den in the first place. But it wasn't because he prayed three times a day that he expected God to answer. It wasn't because he was the wisest of all the political leaders in the kingdom. It wasn't because of his personal holiness or the good deeds of those around him. He realized that the only basis for his prayer to be answered is the goodness of God, the mercy of God, the grace of God, the love of God for his scattered people. And this is really important because sometimes I think we are led to believe through what we might, how we might interpret, for example, the book of Romans, that everyone under the old covenant was a legalist. They thought that if we do good works, we'll get closer to God. And if we don't obey the law, then we'll be ushered far from God. And grace wasn't a part of the old covenant. Well, not so. Grace has infinitely and eternally been embedded and a part of God's nature. Love, mercy, long-suffering. These are not attributes that are realized only in Jesus. These are attributes that are realized in the fullness of the Godhead from time immemorial. And Daniel, in his prayer gives us a little glimpse that he understood this, that he wasn't bound by a legalistic version of the old covenant, but he was bound by a gracious vision of God to live in that truth that our prayers are answered not because we are really good at praying or because we're amazing at church attendance or because we have given over and above what we've been asked to. Our prayers are answered and God's merciful hand is upon us and our families purely because God is good and loving and merciful. And these other things are an overflow or a demonstration of or an articulation of our faith and our affection and our belief in our discipleship. But they are not the cause of moving God's hand, but they are our response of God's hand that moves. And the, But the primary foundation of all of this is not our righteousness, as Daniel says, but because of his great mercy, because of his love, because of his grace. So a reminder there from Daniel that God certainly didn't change from Old Covenant to New Covenant. In fact, a mature understanding of the Old Covenant leads us to grace and mercy and love. So if you haven't checked in with Daniel for a while, I'd strongly recommend that it's time well spent. Until next time, peace.